and welcome to Joseph's Model Railway and Toy Room. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, you don't need to like, follow or subscribe. Just put the videos out there where I can. Have a holly jolly great time doing so. Ah, the shopkeeper's chafe that is, if you didn't know. We'll talk about that in another episode, but I pretty much do it every time after I say holly jolly videos. Now, what are we up to today? Well, what we're gonna be talking about today are these. Now, these are the Knock preformed styrofoam um, retaining walls. Now, there are a couple of different uh, variations, as you can see on the packaging, and uh, obviously you've got a few different uh, tunnel and portal openings as required. It's a bit of an interesting little product, this one. It's not like some other foam type of things and that, and it's quite an interesting one to work with. And I've got a little situation that I was hoping this was going to be the straight out of the packet solution I needed to do this retaining wall behind our station platform here to hide the back line that is here. However, it's not quite that simple. And we're gonna to need to do a few little special things to it. So join me today in what we're up to. Now let's get the camera in close and really get some perspective on what's going on. Let us just start over here for a moment. Now I've got so many things going on, so let's just move this as well. So first of all, here is our product in its most basic form. And what it is, it's a styrofoam type of construction. Um, what's really interesting about this, because you're allowed to cut and manipulate it, is that the color, uh, so this sort of darker, almost a black, dark gray charcoal, whatever, has sort of been embedded into the material. So as you can see with this one here, I actually already cut the top set of pavers off the top. And you just need to use any standard sort of hobby knife or typical blade that you may be using for example, something like this. Now, that's all good and well, but we're gonna to need to get a bit more accuracy for what we need to do. But what's the problem with it? Because it looks like a great thing. We put it down and, and as you can see, here's our back line here. And if we put it down, oh, it's beautiful. It even frames off the height of that locomotive so you can't see it from that kind of height. So everything looks like that's what we should do. Unfortunately, no. Two key problems are happening here at the moment. The first one has to be that it's a bit too tall. By the time we've got the platform in the building, this looks ridiculously out of proportion. I cannot accept that. Second problem is the depth that's biting into the particular scene here. So as you can see, this is of a reasonable size. So if we just bring in our traditional pen that we use here, and put it next to it, you can see we've got quite a bit of depth. In fact, let's not be fair and let's get a bit accurate here, shall we? We're looking at at least one and a half centimeters are going to be sticking out. And all of a sudden, this becomes a bit of a problem in my back scene that I'm up to. In fact, if we just swing the camera around a little bit here, Here is where our station is going to be sitting, somewhere in the middle here. And the problem is this back wall, I like the idea that I've had a fair amount of space here that would give us the opportunity to put a car or something to travel back behind this passage. However, by the time we've put this in here, that's it. I'd be lucky to get a person walking in between that gap. So we're gonna need to trim out some of the bulk on this um, because there is plenty. And I think if we trim some back and recess it back, we might just get away with it. Even with these posts that are here, I think we'll still create some sort of a believable scene. So let's have a quick chat here about what is this back road, so to speak. The whole idea is in this area, I was literally gonna have, and I finally, after all the decisions settled on this particular bus, would be just sitting down here, but you'd still have a thoroughfare for traffic to come across. So. Why did we end up with this little opening here for a roadway? Well, we didn't really. This was never going to be a roadway. This was always just made to access the cables for the track feeds underneath. That's all this was ever going to be. This was going to be a retaining wall. But then, obviously, it was there, and I thought, if I just get a little bit of a low-style profile and we weather it up a bit, fantastic. Now, this particular portal 
was the kind of greeny sandstone look and I didn't mind that but of course I thought we better try and blend it a bit better in so I had to darken it. Then we have this product and then I've noodled around with trying to get some colors that are going to work. Now I think we're going to, this will work out. So you can see I was trying some things. I didn't do it all because I'm not sure what we're going to do. So tick one for that. Other than this does sit a bit low. Again, it's just to give a look. It doesn't, we're not really going to have vehicles going under there. It's just to give that illusion. So what we're also going to have to do is, besides trimming the fat off and bringing this down a bit, also I'd like to bring the height down. So I have rudimentarily worked out a bit of a marking here on the side. And what we're going to do, we're gonna actually do this by building up a template that allows us to accurately, not that the knife did a very bad job, but we're gonna take our hot wire cutter and we're going to evenly cut all the tops off. That's where we're gonna start. So the pavers from the top. Then we're going to work it out, and I think we're basically cutting off, I don't know, I think it's about the first five rows of, of stones, bricks. We're going to cut that off. So once we've taken that away, then we're going to be able to flip it over, and then we can slice out the thickness we need. But we still have a problem, even once we've come down five bricks, as you can see, we're still going to have to get to this height. So we're going to have to take one of these panels and also just make its way down to this kind of height. It doesn't matter that this section of track will end up being exposed anyway. We'll just do a bit of scenery and some vines and shrubs and whatever. And I don't think it's too bad that it sort of opens up for a snapshot and from the objective of being able to clean or access something here, so be it. We will need to do some work. So we have here just a pretty stock standard hot wire cutter that we're gonna use. And as you can see, as described, what we're going to do, I'll do this on a bench. We'll set a jig up so that uh, I'll just literally be gliding along and cutting those top row up off. We'll be cutting those top pavers off. Once that's done, we'll redo the jig again. So we'll obviously do them all at once. Redo the jig again for the base one to cut off down to the fifth brick level. Get that off. Once we're there, that should then give us enough that the hot wire will... will Obviously, we're going to struggle getting to here, but on this one, we're going to be able to just run it out and build that up. And let's see what we can come up with to get something happening here. We have some rather rudimentary calculations on what we need to do with each section of all being 33.5 centimeters and covering 116. We're going to need three and a bit walls, which is exactly what I imagine. Ha! Huh. The latest Hornby publication, yes, consuming the kitchen uh, bench top, which I think is what we'll use today for this process. Why not, uh, why don't we even um, put a light on for you? Now we can really see what we're doing. So here they are. And remember we've chopped the top off of one. Um, but what we're gonna do, that's where we're gonna start. We're going to nicely without using a knife, we have our hot foam cutter here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this piece of timber, clamp it up, put them against it, and let's start off firstly by neatly cutting the ends off of all of these. But uh, I think as you can see, we're going to lop those ends off. As long as that timber stays there, we're perfectly lined up. Absolutely terrible. I mean, that's, that's pretty damn ordinary. Anyone could admit to that. I'm not really at all happy with that at all. And I know we can work it down, but that piece took more than 60 seconds to run across. So it's not like a hot knife through butter. Hmm, okay. Improvement. And I would have taken four solid minutes on cutting this one. And as you can see, they might not look that bad, but if you actually look at it from the other side, you can just have a look at how radical some of those movements are. But okay, we'll carry on like this. I did pre-score this using the blade first, and I think that's probably not a bad idea, but this is from pretty thick material. And it's a very dense type of fine. Like I said, it's been textured with paint and it's certainly not like the green stuff we've been using. So 
Um, I don't know how we're going to thin this stuff down exactly because my original idea seems out the window. As you can see, those uh, bits of powder on the floor there. This is the finer one. Just pay attention to the top row of bricks. That's about the smoothest cut we have had all day. And that one is the last one. And I just did it with the blade resting against uh, the bench as a guide. Um, but still, it's not perfect because the, the blade's going to flex. So if you have a look, there's some little warbles on that behind it. Doesn't matter, that's all going to sit nicely, but I'm just pointing it out to you. The hot foam cutter is just not really cutting the mustard here unless you might have something a bit more powerful. Okay, this one, not too bad. This one, not bad. What are we doing? You can see I've sort of, it's not too bad. We're staying along with the bricks here. And uh, as you can see, I'm literally just scoring it with the knife. And once we've got a few, it'll snap like a scotch finger biscuit. Stop. Wait, what's a scotch finger biscuit? The light on. Ah yes, the immortal pantry. Now, what do we need? Cocoa Pops? Definitely not. Lucky Charms? Not today. Booberry? No, 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 no. What we crave? Not the great Australian Aussie export, Tim Tams. Unfortunately, no, they can be put aside. Ah, the scotch finger. What the hell is he banging on about when he talks about it should just crumble and snap like a scotch finger biscuit? Well, let's find out. Right, and here we are, a scotch finger biscuit. Let's get it out. And we're going to, it's pretty stock standard, and it always gives you the perfect snap, which is what I'm referring to with those retaining walls. Delicious. I look forward to what we can do with Oreos and Tim Tams in the next model making. And it's better, so we're getting them to the size we're going to need. The downside is this thickness. Now I'm prepared to move the station in a bit and slice that down, but I was really hoping to move about a centimeter of bulk out of this. Uh, let's see what we come up with. Okay, here we are. So we've jumped online we ordered one of these hot wire cutters that has slightly more power now it's on at the moment and if we were cutting a typical sort of uh, styrofoam block you'll see it just passes through beautifully so i say to myself that's excellent all right now we set our guide up here and we then run the wall through it. The problem is it comes unstuck, not just because of all the smoke, but when we come through, you can see I've gone up to here. So our wire is indeed heating up, but it doesn't matter how slow I go and guide it, this isn't going to work. So unfortunately, we're back to the drawing board once again, and it would appear that I'm now stuck with a hot foam wire cutter. Lord knows what we'll do with this. Well, let's, uh, what's this, take four, I suppose. I was down at the hardware store just picking up a couple of um, nails and uh, spotted this saw and thought we might give this a try now and see how we can get on cutting our retaining walls. So back on the kitchen bench, I'm sure no one will mind. Uh, and you can see I've just taken, once again, it's that slat wall material upside down, which seems to give me basically the height that I'm looking for in cutting it. So we've just clamped it down on either side and we're gonna take the blade and saw it along and see if this gives us the result we require. Okay. So it looks like we're having a little bit of success here. This is still just the first one and taken me at least five minutes to cut this much. So it's very slow and steady going. First thing is we're doing this in the middle of the day and my wife is at work because I think she would absolutely kill me if she finds this black powder all over the wonderful kitchen bench, which we will thoroughly clean, of course. The problem is though, 
that the blade isn't that big, so I can't go faster. And I have to get into a rhythm where I know to stop because if the blade slips down and hits the aluminium, we have to start the process, get it out, lift it up, and it starts becoming delicate. But this is cutting very well. So we're gonna call this a bit of a solution at the moment. A lot more to do. My arm is already so tired from the movement. So if there was a better way to do it, like a, a band saw or something like that, fantastic. Uh, I was even thinking a reciprocating saw, but it's, it's getting the bulk of it, even with a long reach on it to stay steady. But I think that could be a way to go. So look, this seems to be what we're gonna go with at the moment. Again, we've got flexibility in the blade and all the rest of it. I'm going to swap you over now to time-lapse and we'll keep shuffling along. Thought you might like to join me now in the push for the end. You'll notice on the second one, I kept falling off. That's nothing to do with the technique. It's just on that particular second one, if I show it to you across the top, it is far from flat. So the clamp could only hold it here. And then I ended up with these bubbles where the blade wanted to keep moving. So now you know the truth. We're almost there. It's making a hell of a mess. Hard to believe there was a baked cheesecake going on here less than 48 hours ago. So we will have to do a thorough cleanup so she never does know what we got up to. But this has been working. My arms are killing me, but this is the most practical way to cut this particular knock retaining wall. Using a standard saw is too rough and is not gonna get you the finish you require. This is the best way to go if you're going to need to thin them down a bit. So join me now as we're going to just get that last bit done. Get my arm out of the way so you can see the moment. And we go. Might just bump it a fraction up so we don't hit the rubber on the on the clamp. You can see the clamps have loosened slightly, but ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Look at that. That is quite a considerable saving we're gonna end up with on our layout now, space-wise. So if we just slip the other piece out here, we tap it all up, getting ready to do a clean off. And that's how much we've shaved off. So that's quite considerable and now gives me a very, very good amount of space for our cast to now transverse. I haven't decided if we're just gonna glue this on or maybe just set the top on so it lifts easily on and off, who knows? Let's go have a look though. Time to get cleaning up. So once again, fourth time is a charm and what got us there was the DeWalt 23 TPI uh, flush cut pull saw. And you can see it's got a beautiful flexible blade if you needed to come down and cut a dowel joint that was somewhere tricky on a finishing job. Well, it's been absolutely wonderful in this application, coming in at about $30. And a big shout out to the crew at Trade Tools for providing this magnificent tool that at $30, it's pretty much hard to believe that's really all we needed to do. So here is our material that we've just sawn off. And while it looks like it's gonna be a mess, it's not like your soot or weathering powder. It is just the, the crumbled up foam. And once you've dusted it off, it comes off quite easily. So it's not as bad as it might look in respect to cleaning up. Well, here we are. 
We're not quite finished yet, but let's have a quick update on what's happened as we've just finished letting this dry. So a couple of little happy coincidences did happen along the way. In fact, there's one in this vicinity, which even with the camera as it is, in fact, I'll even be more specific, it's right here. You probably still cannot even see what the happy coincidence is, but let's talk about it. So I think this has turned out really well. We've had 48 hours for this to now dry. Now, we should just take a moment to appreciate that we do still need to put our top wall back on at the moment. And also, just to refresh those of you just joining us now, this was the complete height of the wall. So once we had this on with the top tiles, this was the height. As always discussed, when we see the that would disguise the coaches and everything nicely, but it did look just a bit out of place for where we were, which is why we did bring it down just a little bit. So here we are. Now, the happy coincidence. Let's have a quick chat about it. Modular landscaping, as you saw me discuss in an earlier video, and please feel free to go back and check that one out, is always practical if you need to get back and do something with your scenery. And that's exactly what I wanted to do here. So why would we just install one retaining wall at a time when, ladies and gentlemen, ta-da, we can install all of them at once. So we took a strip of timber here and we put it on with some glue, came back and beaded some more glue on. And we'll put a bit more on just to really reinforce it. We're also just gonna come back along. I did do it while I was constructing it and joining the bits up, but take this one here, for example, you can see they're not. So we'll put a bit of glue and make sure that it won't bend or warp in the future and keep everything nice and true. So exceptionally happy with that. You can see a pop stick uh, arrangement here. Uh, obviously it was just the situation where before we came up with our ideal way of cutting and building this, this is one of our first attempts using our hot knives and things like that. But I think it's come up quite well. The happy accident, which we're gonna glue down and secure here, I'm not exactly sure how that even happened, but it's a brilliant place for it to happen. Because when we come back and sit it in, it's always gonna give us the reference point of where we need to sit this particular uh, piece of wall, and there we go. And I'll clean all that up accordingly. What do we still need to do now? Well, it's not quite done. We're not concluding the video yet. We'll sort the top bit out. We're going to come along with some black paint and just tidy up where the tunnel was. Got a bit of a, um, we're gonna sort the entrance out a little bit better than that. But apart from that, I think it's really coming together nicely. And I have reclaimed a serious amount of space, which was the whole intention of what we're trying to do with the knock retaining wall. Well, here she is. I think the result of this has turned up pretty well. Uh, and I'm really quite happy with the effects we try to create, doing a bit of moss and detail growing up through it. Again, even with the painting, trying to get it down to that color and where we've even tried to join up that uh, portal opening for the tunnel to it, I think is fantastic. And that little hole that we've done is a bit of a whoopsie daisy. I think it is a happy coincidence, because what it means is when you lift it out of position, it will always lock straight into where it was supposed to be. So, there's nothing left to do, but conclude this video. Now, as we're going to finish, just pay attention to this, because you won't see it in the closing credits. Scalemodelscenery.co.uk. We've got this little maximum height barrier. Now, it's not obviously complete in its final place. It is going to be sitting around here, most likely. I'm not sure what we're going to do <clears throat> with the edges and the way it's going to be built up, but I thought I'd just quickly knock it up because it sort of just gives a little bit of a uh, bit of definition there to it. Uh, that's also why you probably will notice that we did end up raising uh, this section just up a bit. You can see I get my finger under it, on the other side, it, this actually matches up to the road height, but we deliberately did this because I'm not sure what's going to happen over here just yet. Um, well, it's probably going to be just um, bushes and shrubs and or an industrial section. I, I'm really not sure, um, but here it is now plausible to actually have a bus 
running in under here. Again, we'll come back to that at a later point. Now, while we've got this tremendous amount of space that we did reacquire, if we just drop this section, um, of course, there is a bit more pleasable amount of room. Remember, if we take some of the styrofoam that we cut off and, and slid back in, you can see we basically had nothing. So I think we did quite well there, but I am still going to bring this back a bit. I think we're going to be probably cutting from about here or thereabouts. Remember, the station will sit on the actual platform. It's covered in glad wrap at the moment while we've been busy doing some ballasting. Um, so it's not really the end of the world. It just was always to give it a little bit more uh, room around it. So we're going to uh, tidy this up as we come along. Likewise, regarding the previous video that you may have just watched that was regarding the War Memorial, where we've just come in here, this is where it does end up joining up. So some bushes, some shrubs, some stonework. I'm really not sure what we're going to do to create this segregation at the moment and clean up the bottom as well. But I'm sure we'll see something all in good time. I think the top actually worked out quite well. I did obviously just give it a little bit of a dusting there of something. I was just trying to take a bit of the sheen out of it. But for the most part, I think it's actually all turned out exceptionally well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally reached the end. Who would have thought it would have been so difficult to literally take such a simple product and then have to end up slicing it into so many pieces. But of course, here we are. Da -da -da -da. It's all official now, it's all finished. I like the way this has come together. I particularly like that we did go with the sort of sticking with our modular landscaping theme that we can just come in and then drop it on, which makes it fantastic if I should need to come and clean the tracks or something, just take it off and go along. I shouldn't need to. Uh, if we just sit this into place, It's elegant, it's simple, and there's no reason I can't come along here with the piece of timber and come and clean it anyway. But, at least for future reasons, very, very practical. And I like that you can still see some of the uh, trays going on behind, because when you are standing up, and particularly when you're tall, but even if you're not, when you do come up closer, you can just see this beautiful, nice straight run to see the trains. And I think that's wonderful uh, where we're trying to maximize the space. The focus is seeing them as they come gliding along here, but I think it'll be just as good because the whole idea is I don't see any reason why at any one time, the whole idea about running the up and the down line, traditionally speaking, is that I could literally come along and set one train off and then another train off and then vice versa, I could have four trains running at the same time uh, when we're just running continuous running without making a stop. There's no reason we couldn't do that. There's certainly enough room for them to be timed out without catching up with each other. So ladies and gentlemen, that does now conclude once again yet another video. Thank you as always for joining me. Girls and boys, ladies and gentlemen, it's always a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Stay safe. Toodles.